Before we begin, this episode does contain conversation around suicide and mental health issues, and therefore listener discretion is advised. But do you think we do enough as an industry regarding mental health? Um, no, Okay. <laughs> is, okay. is the short answer. So, you know, again, I we talk a lot in the charity about as an industry we're not great at reaching out when we need help and and some people don't really know what's wrong with them they know that something's not right but they don't really know what's wrong with them right mm. and 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 that's where talking to someone whether that's the charity or whether that's a peer or whatever mm. that is that can really help to actually acknowledge that I'm okay to feel like this and actually there is something and I need some help. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think, again, it's men aren't great at, at doing this. I know. Um, and, you know, we should be encouraging people to talk and to tell their stories. So, yeah. you know, if there are people, and uh, uh, there's some people that are very open about their mental health and, mm-hmm. and will openly share their experience. And yeah. then there's others that don't, and it's completely personal choice, right? Mm. But uh, as an industry, we need to take it seriously we need to create those safe spaces for people Mm. um and educate yourself so there's a huge push from us at the charity and one thing that we really kind of advocate for is this um prevention to help people before they get to crisis point and the only way we do that is through education and understanding yeah so we do you know lots of different training and, and and lots of resources for people to help with that um and our mission, if you like, is to engage the businesses, the manufacturers, the wholesalers, the contractors, all of those people, engage with them to to make them more aware of, of the mental health issues that are going on and what's available and to educate themselves and, you know, at least to have a programme within their business. Yeah, okay. You know, I mean, wouldn't it be great if if our industry committed to the fact that everyone's going to have a well-being program and, yeah. you know and and really drive that through that that would be amazing yeah because again what i was saying um before we started recording was i think where where people are perhaps unaccustomed um or don't quite understand mm. the the mental health mm. crisis as much as uh, and and i would suggest that it is probably the older generation right. that that's where the that's where the disparity probably is mm-hmm. um just because times were you know times were different yeah um but i don't and i think there's this concern that it's gonna if if we start to if we go down this route as a business mm. um just generally yeah the, the the work that that's going to um the workload that's going to add on and yeah. um, what we're going to have to commit to it is going to be massive but I, yeah i mean it, it, you know an initial one for me would just be just have a there's a there's a direct point of of contact or, or something like that yeah there's a bit of a process where people know that they can talk to that person yeah exactly you know and and a lot of business have mental health first aiders within their business or well-being champions yeah, or yeah. things like that you know now i appreciate that not everyone can do that and you know there's different sizes of, of businesses yeah. within within the industry but even if you um you just start somewhere even if you put posters up about yeah. the eic yeah in, yeah, yeah in the staff rooms you know or anything like that just just commit to it and your point around that concern about it's going to take time it's going to cost more you know i guess it's about looking at the bigger picture isn't it and the long term yeah. view yeah because if you're not looking after your employee well-being, that's going to have a detrimental effect on your business eventually. Yeah, you know, less true. productivity, morale down, more sick days, all of those kind of things. Yeah. So I guess it's just trying to kind of step back and look at the bigger picture and appreciate that that yes, although you can't see it on the bottom line necessarily, mm. um, it it needs to be part of of your overall strategy. Yeah, I think we can actually, uh, in terms of facts, we've got a little bit on that. So that there was an NHS report. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping I'm correct. I believe it was uh, released this year. Mm -hmm. um, And in there it stated that there's uh, approximately 300 billion pounds. This is England only. Yeah. 300 billion pounds in losses due to mental health uh, with the split being 130 billion 
um, is human cost, 110 yeah. is economic, and then 60 is health and care. Yeah. Um, so you're quite right. There's not just a there's not just a human uh, issue, but there, there is also an impact on, like you say, on that bottom line that you yeah. might not see. Yeah. But it is there. It's there, you know. And I think there's so many different things available now. You know, kind of. Um, EAPs like employee assistance programs, yeah. those kind of things, which which a lot of the businesses in our industry have already. Mm. But I think that's probably, and of course I'm going to say this right because I work for the charity, but it is a huge huge advantage to the electrical and energy in- industry to have a charity that's dedicated to them. Absolutely. So there's not many other industries where you have that, you mm. know, and you could almost see us as a free EAP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and businesses are paying for that, mm. um, and, and rightly so, but we can do that for free. Yeah. You know, everything that we do is free and confidential. Obviously, we rely on fundraising, and yeah. we can talk a bit more about that, but, mm-hmm. you know... It's specialised as well, right? It's specialised. Like, we understand the challenges of the industry. Yeah. You know, the... The charity's been around for over a hundred years. Right. Um, it's kind of evolved and grown with the industry, and we want mm. to make sure that we evolve and grow with the industry for the next hundred years. You know. Good. Um, but it's this like wonderful resource that that is available in our industry, and 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 people need to be aware of it more and use it more. You know, and and we can help with all of that. You know, education and training yeah. and understanding, etc. Okay. Well, you said that you've been, um, that you're trying to, you, you speak with uh, manufacturers, wholesalers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you speak to contractors as well. We're trying to speak to more contractors. Okay, good. So how is that, what's the impact? Are you, seeing, are you seeing positive uptake? Yeah, like our industry is wonderful in that it's very supportive of the charity. It's very generous, mm. you know. Um, <clears throat> and I think, as I said previously, in the past 12 to 18 months, we've definitely seen a shift in in people really caring mm. and, and really taking seriously employee well-being. Yeah. Um, of course, there are areas where there's lower awareness of us mm. and not as in, not as much engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of them is in, in contractors and installers. So we're doing a lot of work around that to try and um, get more into, into that area. And, and our fundamental is our first thing is always raise awareness so that people know there is support there for them. So anyone that needs us knows that we're here, right? That is our first thing. And then it's about, so how do we then start to educate and train Mm -hmm. and partner with people and businesses to really help with that employee wellbeing? And then it's about the fundraising and making sure that we can still do that and be around for the next hundred years. Okay.